it's called trust. We have to trust in the Lord, you know, and uh, we have to trust in the Lord wholeheartedly, and he will rescue us out of every situation. Now, before I get started on, on this message, I want to take this time out to thank Pastor Bob. I want to thank you for allowing me to get in this pulpit and bring the message. Because I want to tell you something. There are not a whole lot of pastors that would do that. But that tells me a whole lot about you. That tells me that you are secure in your position in the Lord. You are secure. So I'm very appreciative, and, and, and I thank you. Now this morning we're going to talk about faith. That's what that joke was all about. It was about faith. And uh, the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm doing this message on faith is because, as some of you know, recently I've been having a problem with my stomach. My stomach muscle uh, wasn't processing my food properly, and uh, I wasn't going to the bathroom like I should. So uh, I went to the doctor, and my doctor gave me two choices. One was a medicine that I could take that would, uh, as, uh, for a length of time, if I took it, I could end up with a twitch in one of my eyes. So I said no to that. And uh, the other one was I could take, and for a length of time, it would give me an irregular heartbeat, causing a heart attack. So I said no to that. You know, but my faith never wavered because I know God can heal me, and God has healed me. And uh, I uh, said, well, Lord, you know, I'm going to stick with you because you've healed me already. I just got to wait on it to manifest in my body. And once it manifests, there won't be no side effects. There won't be any side effects, you know. So uh, we're going to talk about faith. What is faith? Charles, could you put up Hebrews 11.1, 1, please? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's the definition of faith. Now, think about that. That may be the only most important component in our Christian walk with God. There's nothing more important than faith. We have to have faith. We can't buy faith. We can't sell it. We can't give it to our friends or, or our relatives or our family members. So what is the role that faith plays in our everyday Christian life. Here's what the dictionary defines faith as. Belief in, devotion to, or trust in somebody or something, especially without logical proof. It also defines faith as belief, and belief in and devotion to God. Now, that kind of sounds like this right here. Thought maybe, think maybe that the Webster might have got his definition from that. You know? So, but the Bible speaks of many other uh, things uh, concerning faith. Now, uh, Charles, could you put up Hebrews 11, 6? The Bible says, without faith, we have no place with God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now, we got to believe that God is, because if we don't believe in the one true God, 
without actually seeing him, we ain't got no faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Now, it's hard for some people to do that, to have faith in a God that they can't see. Because they want to believe in themselves. They want to put themselves above God. There was a time in my life that I didn't believe in things that I didn't see. You know, and how could I believe in God? You know, but there are people out there today that's in that same boat. Some people can't have faith in God because they know that God knows everything. That's why they can't have faith in God. God knows everything about them. He knows every thought that they have. He knows every secret that they're keeping. He knows everything. You know that there is nothing that has ever occurred to God. Get what I'm saying? There is nothing that has ever occurred to God. What I mean by that is, God has never said, you know, it just occurred to me. You know, God knows everything. He knows everything. Also in today's society, people don't trust God simply because they can't see God. You can't see the air either. But if I put you in a room and start sucking all the air out of it, pretty soon you're going to be begging me for that air because you know it's there. You can't see the electricity in that socket up there. Put your finger in there. But you're not going to do that because you know that electricity is there. But you know what? That air that we breathe, breathe that we can't see, God created that air. That electricity that's in that socket that we can't see, God, God gave man the knowledge to invent that electricity. So God is in the midst of everything. So you can't see that air, you can't see that electricity, but you trust in it. Why can't you trust in God when he created all that stuff? That's what we, we should be doing, trusting in the Lord. Faith. Being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we don't see. You might say, I want this faith. You might even say, where do I get it? Well, I know it's something that we just can't conjure up on our own. We can't do that. And it's not a result of uh, a whole lot of study. And it's not a result of pursuing the spiritual. That's not what it is. But the Bible makes it plainly clear. Charles, put up Ephesians 2, uh, verses 8 and 9. For by grace we are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. So, it's nothing that we've done ourselves. It's, 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 it's a gift from God. It's a gift from God, not because we deserve it, because we don't. It's a gift from God, not because we've earned it, because we haven't. It's a gift from God, not because we are worthy to have it, we not. It's a gift from God, not from ourselves, because it's not from us. It's not obtained by uh, our power, our free will. It wasn't. It was simply given to us by God. With his grace and with his mercy. According to his holy plan and purpose. And that's just because of that. God should get all the glory. Amen? Amen? So, why have faith in the first place? Why have it? 
what do we need it for? Well, I'm going to try to explain that. You see, God designed a way to distinguish, distinguish between those that love him and those that don't love him. And it's called faith. Very simply, we need faith to please, to please God. God tells us that it pleases him that we believe in him, even though we can't see him. He tells us that. Let's go back to uh, Hebrews 11, 6. There's a, a verse there that says he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Now, I'm not saying that we should have faith in God just so we can get something from him. However, if we are obedient and faithful, guess what? God just loves to bless us. He loves to pour our blessings upon us. All we got to do is our part because he's going to do his. You'll see the perfect example of that in Luke. Remember the story of, of the uh, woman who was a sinner? And uh, when she heard that Jesus was at meet at the, the Pharisee's house, she brought that alabaster box with ointment in it. And, and as she stood at his feet behind him weep, weeping. And then she began to wash his feet with the, with the tears and, and dry them with, with his hair. You remember that story. You know, anyway, Jesus himself was engaged in dialogue with this sinful woman, and then he gives us a glimpse of why faith is so rewarding. What did he tell that woman? He told her, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. See, now, she believed in Christ. She had faith in Christ, and he rewarded her for it. Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. He rewarded her for that. And we can get those same rewards. Or even greater rewards. If we just faithful and have faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Faith is what sustains us to the end. Knowing that by faith, we will be in heaven with God for all eternity. For all eternity. Charles, put up 1 Peter 1. Verses 8 and 9. It says, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him, now you believe in him and are filled with the inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Okay. Now, I'm going to put my name in there. Though Willie has not seen him, Willie loves him. And even though Willie does not see him now, Willie believes in him and is filled with an inexpressible glorious joy. Now, I'm going to start right there. Even though I don't see the Lord, I love him. And it says, even though I don't see the Lord now, but I'm filled with an inexpressible, glorious joy, that inexpressible, glorious joy that I'm filled with is knowing that I'm going to see the Lord one day face to face, and I'm going to be with him in, throughout eternity. Now, that should get people up and, and, and get you to moving. Now, Hebrews chapter 11, you don't have to put that up, Chuck. That's a, a faith chapter. It's faith all through that chapter. Here are some examples. By faith, Abel offered a pleasing sacrifice to the Lord. Now, we were talking about that, I believe it was last Sunday, in, in the Sunday school class. Abel offered uh, uh, a pleasing sacrifice to the Lord. Now, Cain offered a sacrifice too. 
but it wasn't as pleasing as the one that Ava offered. Now, I'm sure they came up in a household where they saw their mother and their father uh, worship the Lord and, and they had faith in the Lord. Cain probably didn't pick up on that, but Abel did. That's why his sacrifice, in my eyes, was better than Cain. Now, by faith, Noah prepared the ark in a time when rain was unheard of. He prepared the ark when the time, the moisture used to come up out of the ground. They'd never seen rain. But by faith, Noah, Noah had faith in the Lord, and he knew it was going to rain. Was he rewarded? Yes, he was rewarded because he and his family were saved through faith. By faith, Abraham, he left his home and obeyed God's command to go to a place where he didn't even know. And on top of that, he offered up his only son. Now that's faith. He offered up his only son, went to a place where he didn't know where he was going, but by faith he knew that God was going to keep his promise. By faith, Moses led the children of Israel out of Egypt. Moses didn't want to go down there, but through faith he obeyed God, and he brought the children out. By faith, Rahab received the spies of Israel and saved her own life in the process, through faith. Now, there were uh, many other heroes of faith mentioned, you know, that conquered kingdoms, they administered justice, and they gained what was promised. They shut the mouth of lions, quenched the fury of the flames, and escaped the edge of the sword. God turned their weaknesses into strength. Now, Clearly, the existence of faith is demonstrated by action. It's demonstrated by action. Suppose a pastor Bob heard from the Lord and didn't take action. We might not even be here this morning. We might be in a church, but not a church that preaches the word of God. If he hadn't took action, we might be sitting in a church this morning. If he hadn't took action that preaches doctrines of demons. That's what we could be this morning if he hadn't took action when he heard from the Lord. And see, and there's another thing. You got to know the voice of the Lord when he's talking to you. He knew that that was the voice of the Lord. That's why he came out here in the boondocks, left his house over there with the swimming pool, all Miss Susan's beautiful furniture, and came out here and, and, and purchased this property and built a church because he heard the voice of the Lord. We have to know the voice of the Lord. Michelle. You got to know the voice of the Lord just like you know his voice. Landy, you got to know the voice of the Lord just like you know the voice of Reginald. You know what? I could have took Martha and put her in a room with a thousand other voices all going at the same time. And if she said, chilly. Don't you know I would have recognized that voice? And you know what I would have said? Yeah, baby. <laughs> That's right, you know. So we have to recognize the voice of the Lord. We have to. Now, faith is essential to Christianity. It's essential. Remember, Without demonstrating faith and trust in God, we have no place with him. We have no place with him at all. We believe in God's existence by faith. We believe in his existence by faith. A whole lot of people 
have a, a vague, disjointed uh, notion of who God is because they lack the reverence necessary for his exalted position in their lives. See, when God comes into your life, he has an exalted position in your life. In other words, he's the head of your life. But if we don't have the reverence to, to, to let him have that exalted position in our life, we don't have faith. Now, sometimes our faith can falter. But because it's a gift from God given to his children, we just talked about this earlier. Somebody did. There are times of trials and testing. And those times of trial and testing are to make our faith real. And it's to sharpen and to strengthen our faith in a God that we can't see. This is why in James, Charles, would you put up James 1, verse 2 and 4, 2 through 4. This is why James says, consider it pure joy when we fall into trials because testing of our faith produces perseverance and matures us, providing the evidence that our faith is real. So the faith that we have, our faith is not some, something false. Our faith is real. Even though we can't see Jesus, our faith is real. It's not false. That's why it was uh, more important to Jesus that his disciples saw him in these scriptures than to see him physically. He wanted his disciples to see him here in these scriptures. They saw him physically, but they didn't really know him. They didn't really know him. You have to know him by faith. Now, when he disappeared, they knew him by faith. They knew him by faith when he disappeared. Certain of the things you can't see. They saw Jesus physically do all these miracles and everything. They, they was right there. They saw it. But their faith didn't come about until he was gone. That's when their faith, they realized that they had faith. But see, we know all that. God, done, he, he gave it to us right here in this manual. So that should, just knowing that, that should strengthen our faith. It's someone that we can't see. Because there's things in your life I know that the Lord ha has done that should strengthen your faith. Now, the Apostle Paul tells us, as Christians, that we should walk by faith and not by sight. Now, sometimes, like I said, we struggle with the lack of faith. And the main reason why we do this is because a lot of times we will follow our perception of what is true rather than what we know to be true by faith. Faith is not belief without proof or belief despite the evidence, but faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And that trust and confidence we have in someone is built over time and time again after they've proven themselves time and time again. Now, who does that sound like to you? Sound like God to me. Has God proven, God proven himself to you today? 
Have you been in a situation where you saw no way out and then all of a sudden you were relieved out of that situation? That was God. Faith, being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we don't see. So I'm going to ask you, what is the most important thing that God did for you to make you really want to have faith in it? Think about that. While you're thinking about that, Charles put up uh, John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So, my question was, what did God do for you or me to m really make me want to have faith in him? That's what he did right there. God, let's look at this naturally. God, in heaven, we down here, sinning like crazy. Doing everything wrong, ain't doing nothing right. But God stepped into his creation, came down here in the person of Jesus Christ, died on the cross for your sins, for my sins, for the whole world's sins. He didn't have to do that. But he loved us so much. What is man that you are mindful of him? He loved us so much till he stepped into his own creation and did that for us. Now that's a God that we should have faith in. Now, what about Christianity? Does Christianity have anything to do with faith? You better believe it. You see, Christianity is a faith-based religion. It's uh, based on faith in God and his son, Jesus Christ. You see, God has provided us, has provided us with this word right here, this Holy Bible, as, as his testimony of his faithfulness to his people throughout history. All throughout history, this Bible is a testimony of God's faithfulness to us. In this book right here, Christianity is faith in the person and the work of one Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus is our promised Messiah, and he's also the Son of God. And his life on this earth was perfect righteousness according to the revealed law of God. And his death was the atoning sacrifice for the sins of his people. So he died for all of us. So by placing our faith in, and trust in Christ alone for our salvation, God takes our sins and places them on the cross of Christ. And then he rewards us by grace with the perfect righteousness of Christ Jesus. Now, that right there, in a nutshell, should be our message as Christians. And as Christians, we are, we are called to believe this message, and we are called to live in the light of this message. Let me ask you a question. As you go by your, your, your daily business, do you trust complete strangers? No, you don't. No. The more you, uh, you, you become, you intimately know somebody, and the more times that you have seen that person in action, the more likely you're going to believe what they say. Let me give you an example. Pastor Bob was a complete stranger to me when I first put foot in this, this building right here. 
He was a complete stranger to me. But as time has gone by, I trust Pastor Bob completely. You know why? Because I've seen him in action. I've seen him in action because I've become to know him. I don't believe that Pastor Bob would do anything deliberately to hurt me or anybody else in this congregation. Amen? Amen. Now, let's put God in that equation. If God is essentially a stranger to us, we are less likely to believe what he has to say in this word right here. We think just like a whole lot of people think that this word right here is from a man. Now, men wrote it, but they wrote it under the inspiration of God. This is his word. This ain't no man word. Matter of fact, a man ain't this smart. A man ain't this, 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 this smart. And the only cure for us not to believe the, uh, that this is, is uh, the word of a man is to spend more time in it and get to know God, get to know his word. And that idea of this is written by a man, I'll go right on out the window. But a lot of times we can't do that because of distractions. And some of the main distractions are the world, the flesh, and the devil. Let's break that down. The world. That's the accepted wisdom of the unbelieving world. And the culture which we find ourselves in today. Because the worldview right now is, is dominant in naturalism, materialism, skepticism, and atheism. The flesh. That's talking about our sin for nature. Even as Christians, <laughs> this may shock some people, that sin for nature still clings to us. Even as Christians, we struggle with it on a daily basis. Am I right about it? We struggle with it on a daily basis. Now, the devil. That's talking about Satan and all his evil spirits who excite us and entice us, entice us through the world and through our senses. See, Satan can make something look so good. But if you don't know this word, and you, you don't have faith in God, you're going to fall in the trap every time. Every time. Ain't no doubt. So what can these distractions do to us? One thing they can do is bring on fear. Bring on fear. Faith and fear can't coexist together. They can't exist together. Remember what I said about faith in Hebrews 11, being certain of what we don't see. And it's an absolute belief that God is constantly working behind the scenes in every area of our lives. He never stops. He never stops. Even when we don't have any tangible evidence to support the fact God is working in our lives at all times. On the other hand, fear, that's unbelief or weak belief. That's what fear is. And as unbelief gain, gains the upper hand, where does it gain the upper hand at? Right here. 
And once it gets up here, it takes hold of our emotions. And our deliverance from fear and from worry is based on what? It's based on faith. Faith, which is the very opposite of unbelief. Now, we, un we have to understand, too, that faith is something that we just can't produce ourselves. Faith is a gift. It's described as a fruit or a characteristic which is produced in our lives by the Holy Spirit. And as Christians, our faith should be a confident assurance in a God who loves us, who knows our thoughts, and he cares about our every need. And that faith that we have in that God that we can't see is going to grow as we study this word and we learn the attributes of God's amazing character. But we have to get in this word and study this word. Because the more we learn about God, the more we see him working in our lives, and then the more our faith will grow. So how in our day-to-day -day life can we de develop a faith that conquers all our fears? Well, Chuck, put up uh, Romans 10, 17. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. See, God wants us to know him and, and completely rely on, on his direction in our lives, not our direction, because we're going we're gonna to mess it up. Every time we're going to mess it up. I know that's true in my life. You see, God's got the Midas touch, as we would say. You know, but with me, I got the mess up touch. You know, if I don't have God in my life, I can't do nothing right. Nothing. My life was a mess when I come up in this church. But God turned all that around through my faith in him. In other words, we need to get out the way and let God take the lead. Let go, let God. We need to start spending uh, time in prayer and quiet worship. That develops a relationship with our Heavenly Father, too. In the Psalms, we see a picture of David. Uh, David was no different from us. There were times in David's life that he experienced fear. But when David experienced fear, the scripture reveals his faith in these words right here. Chuck, put up Psalm 56, 3. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. When we got fear. When I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And in this life, there's going to be trials and there's going to be tribulations. Jesus said that. And we, we, as Christians, we should know that. Every day ain't going to be rosy. Don't think for one minute that faith is going to mature us and strengthen us without trials and tribulations. Adversity is God's most e effective tool in developing strong faith. Adversity. See, God is sometimes a God of adversity. And he allows us to go through adverse situations in order to strengthen our faith, in order to bring our faith up to a, a, a level where it, it should be. And all that's evident in the scripture. 
God takes each one of us through a whole lot of fearful situations. And as we learn to obey God's word and allow it to saturate right here, that's where it's got to be saturated at in our thought life, we find that each trial becomes a stepping stone to a stronger and deeper faith. And when we do that, it gives us the ability to say, he sustained me in the past, he'll carry me through today, and he'll uphold me in the future. That's how God worked in David's life. When David uh, followed, volunteered to, to fight against Goliath, what did he say? Chuck, put up 1 Samuel 17, 37. Here's what he said. He said that the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear would deliver me from the hand of this Philistine. And that same God that sustained David through all those dangerous situations in the past would do the same thing for us today. When we face financial trouble, Philippians 4.19 When we face financial troubles, and may God and my God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. God's going to take care of us. Don't worry about it. Cast all your cares upon me. That's what he says. If we are anxious about a decision that we need to make. Put up Psalms 32, 8. It reminds us that God will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. He's watching. He's going to make sure you go in the right direction if you got faith in it. Got to have faith. In sickness. Put up Romans 5.3. In sickness, we can remember that Romans 5.3 says... Tribulation works patience. A lot of people want patience. I know I do. But tribulation works patience. If someone turns against us, we can be comforted with the words in Romans 8.31, child. Pastors always quote in this scripture, if God is for us, who can be against us? And I like what he says, if God is for us, who do you care is against you? You know, what separates the Christian faith from all others? All other religions are based on works or a powerless deity or a powerless person. The leaders of all these other religions they die. And guess what? They stay dead. But the Christian faith is based on a crucified Christ and resurrected to life. See, the one that we got faith in, there's an empty grave over there in Israel because he come up out of there. And he's seated at the right-hand side of the Father right today. But all these other religions, those leaders are dead. And the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 14. It says, and if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain. And your faith is in vain. Now, if Christ wasn't raised from the dead, that sermon you preached last Sunday was in vain. 
All them sermons you done preached was in vain. The teaching that you gave Michelle was in vain. Chuck, your teaching was in vain. Rick, your teaching was in vain. If Christ was not raised from the dead. But we know that he was raised from the dead. And, 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 and to, for us to deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ and his work that was done here on the earth, it wasn't satisfactory to God and it wasn't satisfactory to mankind, but we know that Jesus was raised from the dead. And, 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 and that's part of our Christian message, that he was raised from the dead. And we stand on that. Why? Because of our faith. Now, finally, the essentials of Christianity would not be complete without the ingredients that bind us all together, and that ingredient is faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. And as Christians, we live by that verse with the understanding that we believe in a God that we cannot see. But we see his work in our lives. We see his work all around us throughout his creation. We do all of this through faith because we know that faith pleases our God. And as the scripture says in Hebrews eleven six, 6, but faith but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you will see us through these troubling hard times. And Father, in these troubling times, sometimes we are filled with unspeakable fears. Right now, Father, we reach out our hands to you and ask that you would continue to walk beside us. Father, we can't carry all our burdens, but we know that you can and you will. And Father, we ask that you would continue to guide us. Father, we also ask that you will allow us to be strong in the times of trials and storms. Help us to hold on to our faith, Father, even in our darkest hour. And Father, we ask that you would show us your way, not our way, Father, but your way. Right now, it's in your love and Holy Spirit in which we abide. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I want to leave you with this song. And uh, I want you to let this song get into your spirit. If you want to cry, cry. If you want to shout, shout. But meditate on this song. This song is called Jesus is Love. Ain't playing.